Hello everyone, White Witch 110 here. How are you this evening? It is a pleasant evening here in Ottawa. Here, I'll show you the sky. Some cloud cover, so I am hoping that it does clear so that I can see the full moon. Although in the evenings with it almost full, with our curtains open, I've been blessed with having the moon shine on me while I sleep. I'm here this evening to finally begin the third story in the series, The Cabin. This particular story is called Not Now. And here we go. It had been a difficult start to Abigail's year. Her father had decided to sell his business, leaving her without a job, although he did split the profit from the sale. And after five years of marriage, Scott asked for a divorce. She was blindsided by his request. Never being given a reason why, she still agreed as her world fell apart. Abigail's uncle offered her a position at the mansion venue where he worked. It was used for weddings and other gatherings. This is where she had met Scott. It was her job to assist Gary, a co-worker, with the bookings. They got on well and became friends. He, however, hoped for more. Abigail was in no hurry to jump into another relationship. It was unusual for her, but she began to feel uncomfortable on her own at home. This began when she heard noises outside at night. She was sure she heard footsteps on the veranda. But when Abigail peered from the window, no one was there. She said not a word to anyone because she knew what would happen. At first, thoughts rushed to that summer seven years ago. Her friends in Toronto assured her Tom was still in the city. So with him crossed off the list, there was no one left. Maybe it was her imagination getting away from her. It was the night of the big storm. It came to a head. The sky had gradually darkened over the day. Arriving home, the clouds sent a downpour of rain. The sky lit up like it was midday. Thunder shook the cabin. Abigail made double sure everything was closed tight and locked. She had a light dinner, then called it a night. Around a quarter, <clears throat> sorry about that. Around a quarter to three, a loud clap of thunder woke her. She ran to the window, sure there would be damage. Looking out the pane of glass, she could make out a dark figure standing on the driveway. It was staring at the cabin, but worst of all, Abigail was sure it was looking directly at her. She picked up her cell phone on the desk and dialed 911. She explained to the officer what she was seeing. She was told to stay inside, a patrol car was on its way. Fifteen minutes later, the car came up the driveway, but the figure had disappeared between the flashes of lightning. The officer responding was a friend of her uncle. Abigail, can you describe the figure? He asked her. For sure it was a man because there was no real defined shape to it. He stood there for a good half hour. Then just before you came, he was gone after that last flash of lightning, she informed him. Stay inside, your uncle is on his way. My partner and I will search the area. It wasn't long before her uncle arrived. Abigail, you all right? He asked. I'm fine, just a little shook up. Jim is giving the grounds a search, she informed him. Moments later, Jim came through the door. 
pretty wet out there. We found footprints leading to the dock. Whoever it was had a boat waiting for them. I don't suppose you heard anything? No, the thunder was too loud. So you think he left? She asked. Yes, we're sure he's left. You're sure it can't be Tom? Jim asked. Yes, a friend of mine works with him. He hasn't left the city. This was a worry for her uncle. Abigail, I think you should stay at our place tonight. He had moved in with his girlfriend. He seen the look on her face. Just for tonight, he added. Reluctantly, she agreed to make him happy. She grabbed a couple of things and left with him. He had called ahead to his girlfriend. Jennifer is getting the guest room ready for you. He said, driving her back to his place, to their place. The sofa would have been fine, she told him. You need proper rest, no arguing. It didn't take long for her to fall back asleep. She was exhausted. In the morning, Jennifer had toast and coffee ready for her. Do you have any ideas to who it could be? She asked. None. That's what's so upsetting. I mean, if it were Tom, I could deal with it. Not knowing who it is, that's unsettling. Abigail made it clear she would be going home after work. She appreciated their thoughtfulness, but she needed to be home. Her uncle followed her to the cabin after work. He walked the property and went through the house. Content the intruder wasn't there, he left. The night was uneventful to Abigail's relief. Back at work, she and Gary spent the day between phone calls and the file room. Did you see anyone last night? Gary inquired. Nothing at all, which was great. Hopefully it was a one-off, she smiled. How about going to dinner this Friday? Abigail thought for a moment. Sounds like a plan. We could meet at Dan's. I haven't been there in a long time. Doesn't Scott perform there? Gary asked. From my understanding, he isn't right now, she told him. Good. I can pick you up at your place, he suggested. No, it's fine. I'll meet you there. Say around 7.30. That gives me time to change. Sounds good. They continued to work until the end of day. Dan greeted her at the door. My goodness, look what the cat dragged in. He embraced her. It's so good to see you. How have you been? He asked. Doing fine, Dan. It still hurts like hell. Still don't understand why. She hoped he could shed some light. I was just as shocked as you. He never said a word to me, he told Abigail. Your date is waiting for you. He isn't my date. He's a co-worker. There is nothing there. I'm not looking for another relationship right now. Abigail and Gary had a pleasant meal. They sat enjoying a drink and conversation, which Abigail kept work-related. It was 10 o'clock when she made a move to go home. I'll follow, you, I'll follow you back and make sure you get in all right. She didn't bother to argue. When they arrived, Abigail spotted a light spotted a light on in the apartment. She recognized the car. Abby, someone is up in the garage, Gary shouted over. I know who it is. Thanks for the evening. I really enjoyed myself. She was anxious to get in before Scott emerged. Gary took his time driving away. He seen Scott with a tote box in his hands. He felt anger, but at the same time, relief that he 
that she was away from him. On purpose, he stopped his car at the entrance to the driveway, blocking it. Need help? Scott inquired, exiting his vehicle. No, I'm good. Just making sure my date got home all right. This rut's bucket decided to act up. He laughed, closing the hood. Abigail's fine, I'm sure. Scott commented coldly. And how would you know that? Gary asked, knowing full well who he was. I'm her ex-husband. Oh, you live here? He probed. No, not now, but I still own the apartment. Gary left the conversation at that and drove away. The following day at work, neither of them mentioned seeing Scott or his car. Gary, Abigail, I'd like to in introduce Mel. He's joining our location from the island. Both extended their hands. Welcome aboard, Mel, Abigail greeted him. You live on the mainland now? Yes, starting a new life, Mel said. Best place on earth to do that, she smiled. I agree. Mel gave her a questioning look. Something wrong? She asked. I know who you are now, Mel said. I don't expect you know me. Her uncle was concerned. This may have been a mistake to hire him. How do you know my niece? He asked. I know of her, I should say. My ex-wife is Sally Spark. Mel continued. Well, as of two nights ago, she's now Sally Wilson. He seen the pain creep into Abigail's face. You didn't know. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Sally made sure to let me know, so I, Scott, I thought Scott would have told you. This wasn't the news she wanted to hear. She excused herself and ran to the bathroom. Once inside, she was sick, then sick again, until it was only dry heaves. Abigail was not going to work the remainder of the day. She made her way, she made her way home, then called and left a message for her uncle. She apologized for the abrupt exit but assured him she would be in the next day. Once home, she slammed the door shut and locked it behind her. Leaning against the door, she cried. How was she so wrong about them? How was she going to work with Mel, a constant reminder? Then Abigail thought of Mel. She would be a constant reminder to him. At work the next morning, she spoke with Gary. The intruder was at the cabin last night. Did you call the police? He asked. No. I know I should have, but I got a video of him. Abigail brought up the footage on her phone. See, he just stands there. That's what's so creepy. How long was he there for? Gary asked. Half hour, the same amount of time as before. She clicked the video off. I sent it to Officer Jim best thing to do, Gary agreed. Later in the day, she crossed paths with Mel. Abigail, I'm sorry for yesterday. I had no idea. It's all right. I would have found out eventually. Are we going to be able to work together? He asked her. I think so. It wasn't our actions that caused the divorces, she pointed out. Did he give you a reason? Mel inquired. Looking around, she noted a couple of people listening. Why don't we go for drinks after work? Abigail suggested. Maybe a quick meal? You pick the place, Mel said. The only place she felt comfortable was Dan's. He followed her over. Well, this is a surprise, Dan said, seeing the two enter together. A table? He questioned. Yes, we'd like a table and a couple of menus, Mel said, following Dan. The new friend sat down, ordered drinks, then food. The last time I was here, they were singing together. 
That's when I realized there was still something there. When did you know? The day I seen him with the suitcase, all he said was that he wanted a divorce and walked out. I always thought she was still interested in him. I was hopeful with your marriage that she would give up on him. When I was here with friends before the wedding, Sally was here too. I didn't know at first, but when I was in the rest restroom stall, she and a friend walked in. They were talking about us. What did she have to say? He wanted to know. That my marriage wouldn't last the year, that I was too young for him, and she didn't know what he seen in me. I'm sorry you had to hear that. She never did care about anyone else but herself. I'm sure I was only a distraction until she could get her claws into him. Sad thing was, Nicole and Abigail had said the same thing at that time. Sorry, she said. There's no reason for you to say that, but thank you. Abigail chuckled. Sally reminds me of someone else I know. She thought back to her mother. I remember something else she said, Abigail began. Mel cocked his head to the side. Her friend asked what she was going to do about you. She said you would be devastated. Sally told her not to worry her pretty little head. She even suggested she would send you my way. She stopped for a moment. Did she? No. She had nothing to do with my job here. Well, mind you, it's because of her I left the island. But that's as far as it goes. That was enough for one evening. They walked to their cars, said goodnight, and left. It was 2.30 in the morning when the crash of garbage cans woke Abigail. Once again, she dialed the police and a patrol car was dispatched. When the officers arrived, they searched the area and found nothing. Jim knocked on the door. Hello, Abigail. Nothing, I'm afraid. I'm guessing he used the lake for his getaway again. I received your video, but why didn't you call? He asked her. I didn't want to. What did you make of the footage? She was curious. It was too dark to see the features. Even lightning, it didn't help. The quality wasn't very good. We do, however, know the height and the build of this person now. Jim repeated his instructions to her once more. Don't be a hero. The following morning at work, her uncle had words for her. Why didn't you tell me that freak had been out to your place again? Do you know how dangerous this is? I thought Jim was to keep things quiet. Not where you are concerned. I promised your father and Melanie, while they are in Europe, I would watch out for you. Dad asked you to do that? Abigail was surprised. Yes, he worries about you, even though you're an adult. She promised she would contact the police should this person show up again. Gary had been listening in. He'd kept her safe. He'd keep her safe from creeps. I couldn't help overhearing, he said, stepping into the room. You had a visitor again? Yes. Somewhere in the city, a call is placed, and a one-sided conversation begins. This is taking far too long. I expected she'd have called me by now. With her father in Europe, this is my only chance. Don't you understand? Keep up what you're doing, but don't get caught. The conversation was over. Today in the studio, I have Scott and Sally Wilson with me. Good morning, you lovebirds, the DJ said. Hello, great to be here, Peter, Scott greeted in return. How have you been? Have you spoken with Abigail since the divorce? He wanted to know. We've been doing very well, thank you. Next month, we'll be back on track with a full schedule of concert dates, Scott replied. And Abigail, have you seen her? How's she doing? He pushed for an answer. I haven't spoken or seen her since the divorce, but I suppose she's fine. 
At the old mansion, Gary sat listening to the interview. He wasn't aware that Abigail was close by. So married life is agreeing with both of you, the DJ continued. Of course. It do- of course it does, Peter. He married the right woman this time. Sally was quick to answer. Abigail entered the room, walked around the desk, and sat down. Abigail! Feeling guilty, he turned the radio off and apologized. Sorry, I didn't mean to. It's okay. I can't hide from him forever. I need to get used to it, she said. Mel walked in. Did you hear the interview? Yes, I cut part of it. Gary had it on when I walked in. She seems happy with herself, and he sounded content. Abigail turned her head to compose herself. She was stronger than this. And I think I shall leave it there for this evening. We're at 21 minutes. I hope you have enjoyed this first installment of the third story. I'll continue tomorrow night. Hopefully it's another lovely evening and I can read it out here. And it is finally Friday. I have to tell you, I woke up early Monday morning to go to the bathroom. I got up and I started to think what day it was. And for some reason, no, was it Monday? No, it was Tuesday morning, sorry. I got up Tuesday morning to use the washroom. And I started to wonder what day it was. And for some reason, I thought it was Saturday. I got back into bed, I looked at the alarm clock, and the dot was there, and I thought, isn't the dot there for PM? And then I started thinking, no, hubby asked me what I want for lunch. Oh shit, it's Tuesday. I've never thought, after just being at work one day, that the following day was a Saturday. Mm Mm-mm. Well, anyways. To my YouTube family, thank you very much, as always, for coming by to hear the first installment of the third story. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. You mean a lot to me. And anybody new that's coming through to see what's what, please feel free to check out any of my other videos that are here. If you find something that interests you, please give it a thumbs up, drop me a comment, and share any of the videos out with family, friends, co-workers, neighbors, anyone you think that might be interested. While you're here, also consider becoming a subscriber and if you do click the notification bell so that you'll know the next time that I upload so as always have a great evening and have a fabulous Friday and until the next time ciao for now